If you're building a DIY lithium iron phosphate battery like this one right here, and you're using one of these little baby chargers, you can be saving a little time. We got a brand spanking new charger right here that'll charge up to four times as fast. So let's get into it. Unbox that thing, let's see it. Yeah. We got the WAMTEC KPS, right? 6020D? Yep. yep. All right. What is the difference? Because we got a guy right here, little guy, and then we got the new one. Why should why, why should we be interested in buying one of these or anyone want to buy that? Well, it's convenience or the reality of the situation. So they both output 60 volts, but this one will put out five amps and this puts out 20 amps. So it should do the work in a quarter of the time. We looked at the specs. I looked into this thing and it's like, yeah, there's nothing spectacular about it. It just seems to work. The only thing that I've noticed was there's a voltage variation and they list it as like less than five tenths of a percent and plus three millivolts. So that seems pretty acceptable. I mean, if you're talking about a 3.65 top charge on one of these things, you know, you're gonna be looking at a range from like 3.63 to 3.67. However, you know how these things work. By the time you have wires and or your cables connected and you got some resistance in there, well, this thing is showing if you dialed it to 3.65, over here at the terminals, you're gonna be getting a little bit less than that. That's been our experience. However, you wanna test that as you're approaching an upper limit of a battery cell, use your multimeter and figure it out. Other than that, if you get one of these things and you're going to AliExpress, be sure to get the US plug if you're in the USA. These just plug into a regular 15 amp outlet, no big deal. And that's also just to point out, it does not come with cables, but it does come with a couple of lugs. You can make your own. Or, where's our, where's our cables? These are ones that we bought, and so you can just buy them already made too. This is what we're gonna be using in the test. So, right. back to the charger, how long would it take Roughly, you said, okay, so four times is fast, but that's assuming that you're gonna be able to charge at 20 amps the whole time, which right. is not really the case. Right, yeah, that's been something that was, you know, it can kind of shock you once you get into that. You'll go like, oh wow, 20 amps, it's gonna be great. So in theory, this is a 230 amp battery, uh, 230 amp cells, and they would come, let's just say you get the cells, you, you open them up and you go, wow, let's charge these things up, great. They're typically shipped, I think at about 50%, capacity. So we're going to say that these are at 115 amp hours. So we need to put 115 amp hours into there. You would go, okay, great. So 20 amps is going to take about five and a half to six hours with this one. With this one, it's going to take about 23 hours, you know, because you're, you're at a quarter of the quarter of the speed. Reality of the situation is you're only going to get 20 amps coming out of that thing when these things are empty because right. it starts filling up. You got resistance and all that and it's going to slow down. Your charge is gonna start tapering down faster, whereas this one's gonna be at that five amp charge for a lot longer. Yeah. This one's just gonna jump up there faster, but then it's gonna start tapering down, so you're not getting that 20 amps continuous the whole time. Right, yeah. We're gonna see what it is when we put these to the test and we'll see what's going on with them. But, and also, you could get a bigger charger than 20 amp too, but, they cost a lot, right? Right, yeah, you can get, this This thing comes in a 30, I think, maybe a 40 amp with a, with a high voltage like this. But yeah, you're looking at like over 300 bucks. And if you're going to 40 amp, you're really expensive. You're probably up into the $400 range. Don't have any hard numbers on them. So yeah, it's like whatever you feel comfortable with. And we're comfortable with using a 20 amp because, well, we do these batteries, but we've got several chargers too. If you're looking at for a sole charger, you know, and you're gonna do one battery, maybe even a 12 or a 24 yeah. volt, because you're only talking like four or eight cells. And one of these things would be just fine. Yeah, you know, if you're on a budget, don't have a lot of money, this guy's gonna do pretty good. Right. This is just kind of a nice middle ground. Like yep. you have more than just one battery like this to charge and you wanna save some time, you don't wanna be having them sit there for forever charging up, good spot. But yeah, the big ones might be a little overkill for most people. Yeah. It just it, depends on how much you're doing, I guess. Yeah, if you're in business. Get the big one. Yep. All right, so before we start charging up the batteries, uh, we wanna take a look inside and see what the build quality looks like. And we don't know what we're looking at. We're like dogs watching TV. We don't know what a capacitor, what, what, the, what the ratings on them mean or anything. So if you're an electrical engineer, let us know. Leave a comment. Tell us, is this good or not? Because we don't have a clue. All right, so let's take a look at the actual operation of the WampTech power supply. And it's fairly straightforward. We're looking at the front end of it and you have just a plastic front end. I'm not sure the quality of the build of that, but basically you have your power button, which we already turned it on. 
and the buttons that are on here are the overcurrent protection, which we're not going to use the overcurrent protection on charging our batteries, because what will happen is when it gets to the set point for the voltage, then your current just stops. It stops charging, and we'd rather let the battery saturate a little bit, so we don't use the overcurrent protection button. The output current, the output button is one that we do really like on all these. I look for any for that on any of the power supplies that we've purchased. If the output is turned off, then you're not getting anything coming out of the terminals. I like that better because when you want the power, then you just push the output and it'll activate the system and you'll start getting current flowing out. But until then, those are dead up there. Over here, you've got your, it's really hard to tell. I don't know why they made it this way, but it's just kind of raised into the plastic there, kind of lifted up. But you have your voltage setting and you have your current setting. And the only way to, the easiest way to activate these is you just push them and you, it always defaults to the 10th. You can turn it up. If you continue turning it up or down, you're gonna affect the whole system. So you can run it a 10th of a volt at a time, or we can press it again, and we're gonna jump into some bigger numbers here, but the same way we're gonna do that. And you can run the front part also. So we're gonna leave it set right up here for now. If you stop touching anything, it'll just eventually stop flashing. Same thing for the current, starts at the 10th of amp setting, and you can go from there. One thing I did find that was a little bit loud is the beeping. And the way to reset the beeping is we just push the output and hold it for five seconds. And you'll see the display change. We go to the voltage knob, and with that one, if we turn it, we're going to set the adjustment. And the one for the beeps is number four. It's in the manual, pretty easy to see. And that's all we do is go to number four. So as you can see, the voltage is climbing up and we don't want to go too far with this because we do not have a BMS on it. But once we hit 56 volts, you're going to see the current start dropping down, just like all the other power supplies work as the battery cells start getting saturated. There we go, we're on the downhill side. And we did check the voltage at the back of the case where the terminals are connected with the more accurate multimeter we have. And it was fairly close. We were about two tenths of a volt off. And at the terminals, we are losing a little bit of voltage through the cables, but not much. Hey, we see this dropping down, so we're gonna shut it off. You can hear the fans kicked on. Actually, we'll just kind of let it keep going for the moment until it drops down to zero amps and see how it reacts. All right, we had some issues with the cell over voltage when we were running the 16S pack without the BMS on it, which we had previously warned people about. And as I was checking manually the cell voltages while we were doing the test, I noticed that a couple of them were getting a little bit higher than I like. So we stopped that test and we're just gonna test a single cell right now. The one that I pulled out is about 3.325 volts approximately. So to see the test go and make sure it kind of goes smoothly and quickly, actually to make sure the test goes quickly, I'm just gonna set the uh, maximum voltage for 3.4 volts. I've got 10 amps on there, but as soon as I turn it on, it's probably gonna drop, start dropping down, but we'll see how that works. So I'm gonna hit the output. Okay, there you go. The voltage is high enough to where we're only putting in three, just a little over three amps. So this is the differential we're running. We're trying to get to 3.4. The amperage is already dropping down, but according to our tester, we're at 3.32 volts. So we do have a little ways to go if we want to bring it all the way up to a 3.4 volt for the battery cell. But as we had mentioned earlier, what the power supply is seeing and what's actually being seen at the terminals is gonna be two different things because of the voltage that's lost in the battery cables and all the connections. Now my guess is gonna be this is gonna sit for quite a while at somewhere in the two to three amp range. And the only way you can speed that up is if we either drop the voltage well, we don't want to drop that current, but if we drop the voltage, we will see this actually do a shut off. So we'll try that. One thing I did notice 
if you don't touch anything and you start turning, it looks like it's, you can just, we don't have to push the knob to make things happen. You can just start turning. So we're going to take this down to three point. Oops, I turned the wrong one. Look at that. We're going to take this down to three point three five. Let's see what we get there. Let's see if we just, we just want to get a shut off. Wasn't even enough to activate it. Let's try it again. Okay, there we go. 3.38, we get enough to activate it. Well, we've had this test going for quite a while, at least an hour or more, and we have the voltage set at 3.38 volts on a single cell, and the amps, it's not relevant, but it's uh, set up, it was set to 10 amps initially, and it dropped pretty quickly down to the uh, one to two amp range. And right now we're looking at one and a half amps going in, and it's been sitting here for a long time. Uh, I've actually run the voltage up to 3.5, 3.55, just to try to get this thing to shut off. It's taken a long time. What we decided on this thing was we figured out it's not gonna shut off, evidently, till it hits zero amp current outflow. That's different from the bench power supply that we tried we've uh, used quite a bit. Those seem to cut off a lot sooner when they're down to maybe an amp. Never really thought much about it, but those do cut off and this one is just hanging on. So, uh, you know, sometimes the voltage will kind of create, creep up a little bit. Not really sure what we got going on here, but we're going to test the voltage back here at the output before the cables and see what we're looking at. Okay, we're at 3.343 volts. So we're definitely not in danger of over voltage in this thing. And at the battery itself, it's going to be just a little bit higher. Okay, so at the battery, we are at 3.327 volts. So there is that loss in the cabling and connections. <clears throat> Instead of sitting here watching this thing for a few hours, it looks like it's going to cut off. It's not going to cut off until we hit zero amps. So we're going to cheat this a little bit and turn the voltage down a little bit at a time because we just want to see the thing cut off. Here we go. We're getting a little bit lower. We're still running, still in the constant voltage. Okay, let's go down one more hundredth. Oops, wrong one. Uh, kind of forgot. Yeah, it defaults back to the tenth of a volt setting or the tenth position setting Unless you click through so let's go down a little bit. Okay, here we go Let's see what happens. We're at zero amp. Okay, we still have the constant voltage lit up But we have zero amps going in It's gonna have to like saturate the battery enough to get to zero amps before it's actually going to shut off any current flowing out of it into the battery setting I'm not sure if I like that, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. For now, we're going to stop this part of the test because we've seen it. It will shut off and it will finally discontinue charging. All right, so we're done charging the batteries. How did that go? Well, it did okay. It was the first time with this charger, so we don't have any long-term tests on it. And we will be test using this in the future really soon to see how it holds up. And that's going to be the key to it. Because uh, as we looked over, we found a couple of, you know, good points and bad points on it. So, so what do you think the best part of it was? I mean, it, this job, it worked. It's fine. Yeah, it didn't no, overheat. Nothing, nothing spectacular. It just kind of did its job. Yeah. And that's what we kind of feel like for the price. The build quality, it's average for the price. You know, if you're under 200 bucks, yeah. we're not going to get much one way or the other. It's just, you know, sheet metal that's got some nice coat of paint on it. you got a totally plastic front. When you push the buttons up here, they feel kind of okay. Nothing, not substantial, but they don't feel like they're going to just fall apart right away. One problem was the fact that you can turn the knobs while it's charging. Right. That so, is, so they're not locked in. Yeah, that seems to be kind of a downside too, because anybody could come along and touch that or bump it. And I actually did it, I kind of turned it once or twice when we were charging with it. And I went, oh, wait, wait a minute, like, you know, I should be doing that. Uh, I think the other ones normally got to push it in and it's got like a little click, you push it in, then you can start making adjustments. But just to be able to reach up and crank it and start mm -hmm. adjusting, 
Yeah, that, I, be careful. Yeah, noise, not much of a factor. The fan on it's kind of nice. It's temperature controlled, so it's intermittent. So when it's really running hard, it would come on and run for a few minutes and then shut back off. It's not overly loud. Nothing, there's just nothing spectacular about it one way or the other. It just kind of did its job. And the thing we're gonna to wanna to test is the longevity. Yep, and we'll definitely do that. And let us know what you guys think about the inside build quality because we're really curious. And also leave a comment, let us know what other equipment you want us to test, batteries or other chargers or whatever, because we didn't mention this, but we did buy this with our own money, just like everything else we've tested so far. We've bought with our own money. So let us know if you want us to test something, but again, it's not cheap to do this stuff. So go join our Patreon, subscribe star, or buy me a coffee. And we'll have all those links in the description. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.